Brian here from The Design Cure and welcome back to another exciting lesson here in Photoshop. As you're probably already well aware, as designers, we need to constantly be growing our audience and marketing ourselves. And it's no secret that the best way to do this is to create stunning visual imagery to share with the world. So today I'm gonna to take you through a step-by-step -step process on creating realistic styling in Photoshop. So we're gonna cover a lot of topics in the next 12 minutes from how to cut out product images to how to compose them all together in a nice scene to lighting and a bunch more. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a great workflow on creating realistic styles to use to market your design business. If you haven't already, make sure to sign up to the student account where you're gonna receive all the upcoming content that we have for learning, such as video tutorials and podcasts, as well as the download files for this tutorial. So thank you again for being here and I hope you enjoy the video. All right, so let's get started. So here we have Photoshop open. I'm just gonna to go to File, New, and then I'm gonna create a new document and just gonna plan for Instagram here. So just make a square image, about a thousand by a thousand at 72 resolution. We'll name it Styleboard Nightstand. And let's just go in. I have a few images already pre-selected. Now you can get these images from anywhere, from West Elm to Pottery Barn. And if you'd like to follow along, you can get these JPEGs by clicking the download file below this video. And I'm just going to right click on these and bring them in to Photoshop. And you can see they've all loaded up real nicely. And now the idea is to bring them all together into one specific document. Now if you click over here on these double arrows, you can see that you can get a good view of all the documents that you have open. So let's start with this clock. I'm going to go to the Lasso tool. And I'm just going to start selecting the clock. Now there's a lot of tools for selection. And if you guys want to learn more about all the different tools that we like to use for selecting, you can check out our free tutorial library. We got a tutorial specifically for that and many more. But I'm just going to cruise through this as if you already understand selection tools. So now that I have it all selected, I'm going to hit Command J and take the selection and put it on its own layer. And although I'm not shooting for perfection here, I do want to just clean up some of these bigger chunks that we missed. So I'll go in here and select this piece and delete that. Select that one. Maybe jump over to the magic wand tool and just start getting some of these really obvious pieces. And then I'm going to go up to Layer, Duplicate Layer. And then I can choose which document I want to send this layer to. So obviously we want to send it to our nightstand document. And that's where we're going to start collecting all of these images. So I'll just close down the clock one. Don't need that anymore. So now let's go into the table. And this time I'm going to go ahead and use the magic wand tool. So I'll just do a quick selection here. And it looks like I'm going to need to add to it a little bit. So I'll hold shift and just click there. Uh, it looks like it was a little strong. So I'm going to hit command or control Z to undo that. And let's reduce the tolerance a little bit and try that again. Cool. So now that we have our selection, I just need to invert the selection to make sure I have the table selected and not the background. And then once again, hit Command or Control J to put it on its own layer. And then as we did before, we'll go up to Layer, Duplicate Layer, and again choose the Nightstand PSD to send this layer to. And then we'll go ahead and close down our current document. And we don't need to save that. And now we have both of our latest product images in the new document. All right, so to save you guys a little time, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward and jump right into positioning these product images in a composition. So if you've taken our free Photoshop launch course, you already know a little bit about how layers work and how important layer order is. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and organize these layers a little bit better. Now, once you have your layers organized, you just want to turn them all off and start placing them in position one by one. So we'll start with this table and just hit Command T to transform it. And then we can come up and make sure that the height and width are locked by clicking on the link button. And then we can just scale it up uniformly by clicking and dragging on the W icon. And then once we have it to a reasonable size, we can just drag it down. I'm not too interested in trying to sell this dresser, so I'm more interested about the styling of what's going to go on top of it. So I'm just going to bring this all the way down to the bottom and set up a nice stage for the rest of our products. 
All right, so let's start just loosely putting these other pieces in place. We'll turn on the lamp here and just put that on the left side of the desk or the nightstand. And then let's just scale this painting up. You'll notice I left a little bit of it. I'm going to try to reuse that lighting. And you can see I have this layer in the wrong order, so I'm going to move that up to the top. And let's just move this clock into place now. And I'm always trying to keep an eye on scale. I'm trying to make sure that things are going to make sense in the space. I might not be 100% accurate here, but this is just a concept. So just a few more adjustments here. Just trying to make it look like it's sitting on the stone correctly. And obviously we have a problem because this plant and the clock, they're definitely not going to fit on that thing together. So I'm going to have to remove that plant easy enough to do. We'll just select the lasso tool, make a rough selection around the plant, and then just delete that. Now I'm going to just switch over to the magnifying glass with by hitting Z, and then switch over to the brush tool by hitting B. Now if you hold Alt, you can actually sample the color from the surrounding images and then let go of Alt and you can just paint that color right into the area you want to cover up. Now I usually like to have a soft brush selected and to sample often. Alright, so let's come back up, turn our clock back on, and voila! Not looking too shabby. So the next thing I want to look at is lighting. So some of these products aren't being lit from the same direction. So I just want to choose one direction and then make sure all the products are facing the right way. So if we look at the painting, we can see that the light is coming from the right side. And if we look at the bricks also coming from the right side. So let's just pick the right side as being the key light direction and make the rest of our product images follow that direction. So this lamp, for instance, I need to flip that around. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to select the lamps layer, and then hit Command T. And then if I right click on that, I can go down to flip horizontally. And what I'm also starting to notice is that the, the scale between the dresser and the lamp is just a little bit off. So I'm going to resize this lamp a little bit. And then judging by that, I want to make sure that we have enough space so that the composition doesn't feel too cluttered. So I'm just going to reposition some things a little bit. Again, using the transform tool for my repositioning and resizing. Just readjust this painting a little bit. And we're going to have to flip this clock around by, again, hitting Command T, right click, flip horizontally. And now it's facing the right light direction. You can see that the face is a little bit backwards, and we'll fix that coming up. And we'll also flip this nightstand and you can see that things are starting to come together all right so now let's just move this painting back behind the dresser turn everything else off let's make a new layer and this time we're going to fill in the back wall so i'm going to hit the brush tool and then hold alt again to select the color of the wall and we'll just fill that in with the paint bucket tool and for this example we'll just use the same wall color that is occurring within the painting cutout but if you wanted to use your own wall color, you could definitely do that. Again, we have a ton of stuff over in our tutorial library. So if you haven't checked that out yet, you definitely should. So now I just want to smooth out the edges of this painting cutout. So I'm going to choose the eraser and make sure I have a very soft brush. And then I'm just going to slowly go across the edges of this painting. And you can adjust the brush size by hitting the bracket keys. And for larger areas, you're going to want to use a large brush. And smaller detailed areas, you're going to want to use a smaller brush. The larger brush gives you a little bit more feathering. All right, so let's see what else we have over here. Let's um, just turn these on. And I think what we want to do now is just add a few shadows. So it is a pretty direct light coming from the right side. So I'm guessing that we're going to have some subtle shadows that are coming off of this brick piece. And so with the lasso tool, I'll just select a rough idea of where I think the shadow is going to go. And we'll create a new layer for the shadow to live on. 
Now what I like to do is click on the foreground color and then navigate to the darkest part of the nightstand, sampling that color, hit OK. And then just switch over to the paint bucket tool and fill the selection with that color. Hit Command D to deselect that. We can then go up to Filter and Gaussian Blur and we can just slide it around until it looks right. So that's looking pretty good. Now it's a bit of a strong shadow, so let's take the opacity down a touch by going over to the slider. And let's Command T on this layer and just stretch it out a little bit more to give it more of a dramatic feeling. Now if we duplicate that shadow, we can use it again to put beneath the lamp. And then let's just come over here with the lasso tool and we'll delete the excess amount. And while we're at it, why don't we just go ahead and delete this wire as well. Or let's see if we can bend it down and see what it looks like. So if I hit Command or Control T, I can right click and go down to Warp. And then just bend this wire down. So that looks alright, but let's just keep it clean and delete the wire and pretend like it's going off the back of the nightstand. Cool, so one thing this is missing, I think, is a shadow behind the nightstand. So let's just use the polygonal lasso tool and draw a nice straight line in the direction we think the light is coming from. And then I just want to choose a dark color. And just like we did with the other shadow, we'll fill this selection with the paint bucket tool. And then we'll deselect, go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and again, just drag it out until it looks somewhat realistic. And one last thing I want to do is just clean up this lamp a little bit. There's still some white fringe on it that I think we could just do without. Just a little bit more up here between the, the shade and the base. And as we approach the end, I'd just like to zoom out a little bit and take a look from the distance. And finally, let's get this clock flipped around so it doesn't look weird. So I'm going to use the lasso tool. And just do a rough selection. Hit Command T, right click, flip horizontal. And that gets us almost there. And then I'll just put it in perspective by right clicking again and just going down to perspective and just kind of messing around with it until it looks a little more natural and there we have it folks thank you very much for joining me for this one i hope you learned a few things please go ahead and give this a try with your own product images and please come and share them on our facebook page we'd love to see your work